Mr. Stoltenberg, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. I would like to ask you first, there are already more than three, uh, two years since uh, Russia started war in Ukraine. Why, on your opinion, we are not able still to stop Putin? I think we have to understand that uh, President Putin uh, totally underestimated Ukraine, but also underestimated um, uh, NATO allies when he invaded uh, Ukraine back in 2022, because he expected, and actually also many uh, experts in, in the West thought that uh, President Putin, Moscow, was going to take control over uh, Kiev within days and, uh, and uh, the rest of Ukraine within weeks. That has not happened. Uh, Ukrainians, uh, the Ukrainian armed forces have been able to push back to liberate 50% of the territory that Russia occupied in the beginning. They have been able to inflict heavy losses on uh, the Russian armed forces. Uh, but of course what we have seen is that now uh, Russia has put their uh, whole economy on the war footing. Um, they are receiving significant support from China, from North Korea, uh, from Iran. So this we have to take very seriously and that's exactly why we need to step up uh, and provide more support to, to, to Ukraine and also why I hope that NATO allies will make important decisions on this at the NATO summit uh, in Washington and that was also the issue that we discussed here in Riga today at the uh, meeting with the uh, um, allies from the Eastern Flank. Yeah, and here in Riga you have said that it should be, there should be continuous stable military assistance for Ukraine, no delay, delays, no gaps. Uh, and that would be also a signal for Russia. Uh, how to ensure that that, that that would happen? My proposal is that NATO allies uh, agree to establish uh, a much stronger uh, NATO lead role in coordinating the security assistance, uh, the ammunition and the weapons provided to Ukraine, but also the training, and that we also agree a long-term uh, uh, financial commitment uh, to ensure that we have a stable, predictable, uh, um, uh, support for Ukraine uh, because NATO allies have provided uh, a lot of support and Latvia is among those countries uh, really leading by example but the reality is that the United States spent uh, nine, uh, six months agreeing uh, a new package uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, spring and also uh, European allies have promised but not always delivered so we need to prevent these gaps and delays and therefore I think that NATO could play a much bigger role uh, in coordinating and ensuring the predict predictability and the accountability when it comes to supporting Ukraine. And this uh, last uh, situation with uh, uh, US Congress uh, having uh, like a lot of time to, to decide uh, of the support, could NATO also involve in that situation and help? Well, I think that if we have a stronger NATO framework, uh, a stronger NATO commitment, uh, then the threshold for not deliver will be higher uh, because uh, uh, ad hoc voluntary uh, short-term uh, uh, contributions, announcements, uh, is not uh, as strong as a NATO commitment to deliver uh, uh, every month uh, uh, for long term, uh, which is what I'm uh, hoping that allies will agree uh, before uh, or at the NATO summit in July. And the paradox is that the more credible we are when it comes to uh, committing for the long term, providing uh, Ukraine with weapons and ammunition for the long term, the sooner this war can end. Because now President Putin believes uh, that he can wait us out. We need to demonstrate very clearly that uh, Moscow cannot wait us out, that we are there for the long term. And then at some stage Putin will realize that he will not win on the battlefield. He has to sit down and accept a solution where Ukraine uh, continues as a sovereign, independent, democratic uh, nation in, uh, in Ukraine. So everyone who wants peace, a lasting peace, the best way to achieve that is by providing military support to Ukraine, so President Putin uh, stops attacking uh, Ukraine. But how committed are we? Because here in Riga, for example, uh, uh, Slovak and uh, Hungarian delegations are represented by ambassadors. There, there are no um, uh, presidents. And also, uh, President of Bulgaria recently said that he doesn't believe victory of Ukraine. So there are gaps, I mean, there are differences of uh, opinions. How uh, committed are we? 
Well, we are 32 allies, and of course there are uh, differences between uh, 32 allies on many issues, uh, also on, uh, on how to uh, uh, support Ukraine. But all allies have clearly, uh, again and again in, in, in NATO, uh, agreed uh, to clearly condemn Russia's brutal invasion of uh, Ukraine. All allies have expressed their support to Ukraine's territorial integrity, uh, sovereignty, and all allies are in different ways providing uh, lethal and non-lethal uh, support to Ukraine. Um, and I hope that, and I expect that by the NATO summit, we will then agree an even stronger uh, NATO uh, uh, framework and a lead role in coordinating the provision of support to Ukraine. Mr. Stoltenberg, what, which would be the main three points you would uh, love to see agreed it, uh, in NATO summit? Well, I would like to see that allies agree to set up uh, a NATO framework uh, to coordinate uh, the training and the provision of uh, security assistance, uh, that they will agree a long-term financial uh, commitment for as long as it takes, a minimum 40 billion uh, euros a year, um, uh, which will then be more or less the, the level of support we are given so far, but that, that as a minimum uh, uh, level of support. And thirdly, that we also agree a strong language, uh, a strong message that Ukraine will become a NATO ally and help to move Ukraine uh, uh, towards a NATO membership, uh, which is the only way to provide Ukraine in the long term with the security guarantees they need to ensure that Russia doesn't attack again. And I would like to ask you finally one personal question. I think you are the only Secretary General who uh, was, uh, whose mandate has been uh, extended twice, if I'm not mistaken. And you have seen operations in Afghanistan, withdrawal of uh, NATO troops from Afghanistan, which was one of the most difficult decisions, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. Now Russia's war in Ukraine. Do you see that this situation this time is more most difficult uh, so-called battlefield also for you well to be secretary general of nato uh, for 10 years has been a privilege uh, but also very meaningful because during this decade we have seen how important it is that nato allies stand together we live in a more dangerous world we have a global competition uh, also with uh, uh, china uh, we have uh, a new uh, war in the Middle East. We have uh, a full-scale uh, war in uh, Europe with uh, brutal, uh, Russia's brutal war against uh, Ukraine. And in a more dangerous world, it's even more important that NATO allies stand together, North America and Europe. Um, because as long as we stand together, we are uh, safe. Uh, there will be no military attack against any NATO ally. Uh, because together we represent 50% of the world's military might. 50% of the world's economic might. Uh, so um, the world is more dangerous, but NATO is stronger. And by being strong, uh, by uh, stating clearly and, 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 and demonstrating the resolve to protect and support each other, uh, there will be no armed attack against any NATO ally. And that's, that's, that's the purpose of NATO. It's actually not to fight the war, that, but, but to prevent the war. We've done so uh, successfully for 75 years, and we continue to do so. So that will be quite a task for the next Secretary General, right? Absolutely, and the key for NATO is always to, despite our differences, um, uh, to ensure that we are united and that we are changing when the world is changing. That's exactly what NATO has done for many decades, and I'm absolutely confident that that will also be the case in the future. Uh, just by having members like Latvia make me uh, um, uh, confident that we will uh, remain the most successful alliance in history. Uh, Latvia may be not the biggest NATO ally, but a very committed, a very uh, strong uh, and uh, an important uh, ally. And uh, just over the last uh, year, we have now also enlarged uh, with two new members, Sweden and Finland. Uh, that makes the whole of NATO stronger. But in particular, the Baltic region, of course, benefits a lot from having Finland and Sweden as uh, members. That's right. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me.